What's up guys? I'm Spencer. I'm back here on the Rebel Lug channel to review more of the Star Wars 20th Anniversary LEGO sets. This is the Snowspeeder set, which has 309 pieces and is 40 US dollars. In our new sort of like critic review system, out of 16 ratings from Rebel Lug members that rated from 1 to 10 uh, all the new sets, this received the lowest by at least a point of all the new sets with a 4.56, which I would call an overall, you know, like loss. Uh, anything below a five, I would probably call a loss. Many people being really disappointed in how just like unoriginal, oh, and how just unoriginal getting another snowspeeder of the same model that we've had just so many times before, whether they're standalone or included in other sets, there's probably at least like half a dozen, which is really just no fun. Dayton from Rebel Egg going on to say, nothing new, just a rehash of the past five Snowspeeders. And Chris from Chris Productions going to say, same old, same old, but not same old price. Terrible price for peace and not even making up in the minifig department. So I hope that this review can help you sort of form your own opinion about this set and whether you want to buy it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about the new Rebel Egg intro, by the way. And uh, enjoy. Okay, so this is everything that we get in the set. We get four minifigures, including the promotional Lando, this like dish turret thing over here on the side, and of course the snowspeeder. I think we're just gonna start with the snowspeeder and get into why this had the lowest critic rating of all the sets that Rebel Lug reviewed. The biggest reason that people were really upset about this one was that the snowspeeder has been made so many times in such similar ways to this that it was just a really boring release, especially for a promotional line such as this. Nick Jensen went as far to say that this is somehow even more gray and boring than the original set, which was literally gray. Lego has obviously figured out the Snowspeeder design that they like the most, and they're just going to continue remaking it basically indefinitely, it seems like. They also believed that for $40, this was pretty unreasonable to get because the only sizable thing you end up with is, of course, the Snowspeeder itself. And you do get the turret and four total minifigures, which is quite a bit. But for the perceived value of just getting a Snowspeeder, that's kind of ridiculous. What you see with this thing is pretty much what you get. So I'm really just going to kind of give you a look around here. There's a sticker right here on the front and there's a sticker on either side in two spots. Um, and then there's stickers on the sides of the windows right there. And then the windshield itself is printed. And then of course it has that off-white print that, you know, they can't really seem to totally get right. Actually, I almost forgot there's stickers underneath these flaps here, which I suppose is actually a pretty cool detail. I like what they did right here with the wheels and the truncated cones and these modified two by two round things. That's pretty cool. Underneath is pretty ordinary, as you can see, the wings just kind of snap on with hinges, and the way that they're formed and those black slopes right there means that they can't adjust at all. I do like how well these front wedges kind of, you know, meld together there at the front, but yeah, um, the bottom is expectedly pretty boring. I do like, however, how these spring-loaded shooters are mounted, you know, with just uh, a bracket on the top and a bracket on the bottom. That's a sick building technique that I think uh, maybe, hopefully, some people building this will pick up on. The winch on the back works like any other, you know, Lego winch. It, it does its thing. Uh, popping open the windshield. Oh, shoot. Popping open the windshield. Uh, you can see this has two points of articulation, but as you just saw, this, this uh, first hinge, I don't know if it's really meant to, you know, be opened even. It's just kind of there for the mount, and it, you know, totally breaks off the windshield when you try and use it. So they have a smooth hinge here at the back, which works... Uh, much better to make for this giant uh, windshield assembly here, which I actually think is pretty cool. If we take a look inside, we can see it's actually, you know, I don't know, mildly detailed, I guess. There's some little uh, grates right there, and then the really nice looking printed control panel. There's also a sticker control panel for the for the gunner on the back that has, a, you know, the gun kind of printed on it, and then even some snow-capped mountains in the background. That's a really nice detail, actually, I think. You also saw that there were those little things for the minifigure legs to slot into in there so they don't really move around. They don't hold them in place, so I don't totally see the purpose of them, um, but they've been putting them in sets, and I don't know. They do something. They hold them in just a little bit, but not too much, I guess. And then you really gotta lay the figures down pretty much all the way 
uh, so that the windshield can, can cover them and it pretty much probably like almost touches their helmets. But that's what the pilots, you know, kind of look like in there once they're actually inside of the ship. And yeah, I don't think there's anything else to, to really go over here. This dish turret isn't totally as lame as it could be. They tried to, you know, build up the base a little bit um, more than they had to, I suppose, you know, by putting like some slopes in there to make it not look totally, you know, wimpy and stuff. And then, you know, it swivels all the way around and has this uh, one Technic pin for some up and down motion. There's also, as you can see, a stud shooter on it. And uh, yeah, there's not really that much else to go over. I think it's a, I think it's a good look. Uh, not that it, you know, hasn't been done a whole bunch of times, just like the snow speeder. But you know, it's doing what it's got to do. I'm gonna assume the reason they they built this up more than they probably would was because this is like a forty dollar set, so they probably wanted to fill that gap somewhere. Uh, and here it is. And these are the four minifigures we end up with. I'm going to assume this is where they justified the $40 price point, is that we have uh, four minifigures, which they, you know, kind of had to do because they had the two pilots and stuff like that. So this is probably one of the most exceptionally detailed uh, Rebel Pilot looks that we've ever gotten. As you can see, there's a lot going on on the torso. There's even a belt print and, you know, these two different leg prints. I think that this is, I guess, maybe a welcome addition, even though we've ended up with so many different Rebel Pilot outfits, which is why I think this set is just so underwhelming for so many people because almost all of this set is just like remaking things that they already got right a whole bunch of times. Uh, he has, you know, a different face print with the, you know, the orange eye protector thing in front of him. The helmet looks, you know, accurate and cool, I guess. But, uh, yeah, you know, just underwhelming as a minifigure, I think. Next we get Dak, another, you know, minifigure remake here. I like this because we get, you know, the Rebel Helmet with the blue markings on it. I think that's cool to have for some people because there's going to be so many more uh, Luke helmets out there. And he has an identical body print to Luke here. And then again, just a similar um, opposite face print, uh, but this one looks, you know, kind of scared and stuff. And again, you know, that lame thing where you can see the alternate face from under the helmet on the opposite side of the, the figure which is kind of lame for people that are, you know, super into accuracy or stuff like that. Uh, but I don't know, in my opinion, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. This is our generic Hoth rebel soldier. He gets this, you know, classic super big gun here, which is, you know, fun to see. And I don't know exactly when he's been recolored, uh, but now he has this dark tan hat and, and dark tan legs when they used to just be regular tan. Good looking torso. Not a lot to say there, I guess. They did a solid job on this. And then under his backpack that you'll never see, uh, there's some actually pretty cool back printing, I think, you know, detailed because they have this texture here and some, some lines to the bottom and the rest of the belt. Um, that's cool that they would leave that there, I guess, with the intention of putting the backpack. If I had to say one thing, I'd probably say I wish that they, you know, like took opportunities when they had these, you know, super generic minifigures that aren't actually characters to give Lego builders, you know, like maybe a a wider variety of heads or something like that, like if they had given a different color head or a female head or something like that. But, you know, this face is already super common. Uh, so it's, you know, it doesn't really add to one's collection all that much. And then finally we land on the 20th anniversary, the gimmick of this set, uh, the, the Lando Calrissian figure. I think this is cool to see because this is actually a super rare figure. Unlike the other figures that are in this line of anniversary sets that are really super generic figures, this came in the, the really super rare Cloud City set. Um, and as far as I can tell, it actually looks um, similar, if not identical, you know, when it comes down to the torso print and the face print, which is, you know, like kind of the only thing that they, you know, would be able to change and stuff. And it comes with this old style blaster and stuff like that, which is cool to see, but they ended up changing the cape. The old one had just a yellow cape, uh, while this one is more accurate to the movie, which has this cool, um, unique to this set, double layer cape that's yellow on the inside and light blue on the outside, which I think is so cool to see. It also, you know, makes it thicker and stuff because it's, you know, literally two capes. I could picture some people being upset that they didn't stay, like, accurate to the thing that they're trying to recreate, the nostalgia of the old minifigure, but I don't know, I think I'm fine with it because the cape is just so cool. If they had changed it to, like, a blue cape for no reason, that wouldn't, you know, really add a lot of value or anything to, 
to one's collection or to the market or to the figure, uh, then I would probably be uh, you know upset about it, but this is cool. Um, and then of course, just like the other 20th anniversary figs, it says 20 years Lego Star Wars on the back, and then you get this 4x4 modified tile with the same print on it, uh, just bigger, and it says Lando Calrissian, which is the whole idea of this promotional line of sets. All right, final verdict on this set. I'm gonna side with most of Rebelug here in that this is definitely a boring release. Of course, it's destined to kind of be a boring release because the whole point is that this is like a remake of, you know, a classic set, except this is also a remake of like five other sets. So it's not that nostalgic to me, I don't think, um, just because it's been coming out so much. And then it's not even like a new or cool design. It's a design that many people have seen for many years. Not that much has changed. Of course, they add like little details and new pieces like these truncated cones, which haven't been around for probably more than like five years or something, but it's still just not that interesting. Um, I think probably the only most interesting part might be the Lando figure. Uh, this is probably my favorite of all the, you know, classic remake minifigures that are in this entire line, but I don't think it justifies the $40 price point. So I don't know if you're kind of like a longer term Lego Star Wars collector or builder, or just, you know, fan and stuff, I'm probably going to give this a pass. Uh, you know, maybe that doesn't apply to everyone, uh, but if you're really trying to decide what to buy, I would say this one is a pass. So anyway, let us know what you think of the review, what we can do better, and all that kind of stuff, and uh, subscribe to the Rebelog channel, the one you're watching right now, uh, for more content coming in the future that isn't just reviews.